is most of the 25 offsets. Hi, this is Eric Slack, Senior Analyst with Storage Switzerland, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're talking about caching with Rich Peterson, Director of Marketing for SanDisk. Hi, Rich. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. It's very good to speak with you. Using Flash as a cache uh, is a, a becoming a real popular way to improve uh, storage performance and thereby speed up applications. Uh, one implementation that we're seeing a lot of is, is putting the, uh, the cache directly into the application server, um, something we call server-side caching. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like you to ask you to talk a little bit about that specifically, but maybe uh, as a, as a kind of a preparation for that, can you kind of give us a, an overview so we're all on the same page about what caching is in a storage context and how it kind of applies? Sure, absolutely. So caching really is uh, the task of identifying the hot data, the frequently accessed data, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, putting that in a memory resource that's as close as possible to the CPU where it's required. So, you know, if you take a look at um, what we're doing with servers today, you know, originally caching was done kind of below the SAN on or above storage appliances. Mm -hmm. So you could put solid state onto uh, the storage appliance, which would improve the performance of the storage right. appliance. The problem was that the I.O. still had to traverse the SAN to get to the server. So to your question, oh, how do we do caching by putting the solid state directly up in the server? Okay. And that's, that's really what uh, server-side caching is all about. It's the same basic concept of creating a temporary store of hot data that the CPU is going to be accessing frequently. So there's two parts to it. The mm -hmm. first is identifying the hot data, knowing uh, what's being frequently read and written by the application, and then making sure that it's made available on uh, solid state memory that's in the server. Okay. Now, big advantage, obviously, first of all, is that um, when you have the solid state in the server, you're much closer to the CPU. So if we're talking about like a PCIe attached device, you're looking at uh, 20 uh, microseconds to access the data from the SSD versus potentially milliseconds, depending on the traffic on the SAN. Okay, so, so you're, you're, you're cutting out the network in the process and moving the data closer to the CPU then? Yeah, okay. the, the purpose of a cache is to deliver the data fast, so you want to put that where it can do its job the best. Right, that makes sense. But there's another advantage too, which is that when you do caching in the storage layer, it's sort of the rising tide raising all boats. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do server-side caching, what you're able to do is you're able to actually look at every individual server that you've got and understand its workload and its requirements and select the caching that's appropriate to it. So, for example, I might require a read-write cache on this server. Mm -hmm. I might be fine with a read-only cache on this server. I might be this might be a very high-performing server where I want a very expensive SSD mm -hmm. uh, with high-performance characteristics and a large capacity, whereas a more mainstream SSD might do the job for me here. So it gives, by doing the caching in the server, we're able to precisely target the cache uh, performance and mm -hmm. characteristics to the server and its workload. So is that is that choosing hardware that's specific to the application running on the on the server, or is it is it a different kind of cache, or is it both? It, it's a little bit of both. Uh -huh. um, so in the case of uh, the hardware selection, different applications will uh, have a different percentage of their data set that's hot. Mm -hmm. Certain applications like Microsoft Exchange are going to have a very predictable pattern. You know, everybody's going to come in and look at their email for that day, right. so we know what percent of that database is going to be hot data. Others, like perhaps uh, applications that are doing uh, business analytics, might mm -hmm. have a very different type of workload characteristic that might require a larger sized cache relative to the uh, size of the data set. Okay. But with, with a software solution, you're able to basically select you know, what you need per, on a okay. per server basis. Okay. That makes sense. If you like, I'll show you something very interesting, too. Yeah, go. Too. go. So one of, the, the, one of the key things here is that, of course, we're making the applications perform better. But if I take 80% of the traffic that mm -hmm. was coming from this server, and instead of directing it down to the SAN, but instead I make that just go behind, between the CPU and the memory and the, and the SSD. Right. So I've taken 80% of the load off the SAN. So what this means is that the CIO, the IT managers, mm -hmm. are going to get a lot more value out of their existing storage infrastructure because it's not being overloaded with I.O. Mm -hmm. And what's more, hmm. let's imagine that I'm not doing caching over here. The traffic that I took off here is actually going to help the performance of that server. 
because you're improving the performance of the sand by by taking okay that's exactly oh, right that's interesting. so it's very interesting what you want to do with with server-side caching is mm -hmm. you want to target those performance sensitive those IO intensive applications first and experiment with SSD based caching in that server there and over time you will see that you're getting more productivity out of your existing storage mm -hmm. investment and you might even be improving the uh, performance of servers where you're not even okay. doing caching Interesting. Um, let me ask you another question. It is a concept of, uh, called hardware neutrality that we've heard, and, and I know that you guys have talked a little about that in, in, uh, in, in, in the, the, uh, the realm of, of caching software, for example. Um, can you explain what hardware neutrality means and, and sort of what the advantages are compared to, uh, to non-neutral hardware, or <laughs> if there is such a thing? Yeah, yeah, very much so. I mean, uh, basically, uh, our software is in all it's an all software solution. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're basically, you know, we will work with any vendor's SSD. Now, you know, SanDisk, of course, does make, uh, right. you know, enterprise SSDs. Mm -hmm. But this, on the software side of the business, we partner with other uh, SSD vendors. So really, we're uh, open both to wh whatever vendor uh, is providing the, uh, the flash, mm -hmm. but also whatever attach interface they're using. So it could be PCIe, it could be SAS, it could be SATA. And again, in these lighter workloads, you don't necessarily need the world's most expensive, uh, you know, flash device. Right. So you can get you you can get really good performance from a from a less expensive device uh, from ourselves or from one of our partners. Oh, so you're saying then that that sort of to your earlier sort of discussion that that you can um, sort of customize the hardware for for different applications and different workloads. You, you're saying then hardware neutrality then allows you to choose different kinds of hardware to uh, as opposed to if, if, if you're locked into the cache is owned by the hardware manufacturer, then you're locked into one kind of hardware? Is that yeah, yeah, more okay. or less. Um, you'll, be, you'll be locked into the hardware that's available. Maybe that vendor only has PCIe attached mm -hmm. uh, devices, but you have a SAS interface that you want to be able to support. Um, oh, you know, or maybe, maybe uh, you're looking and your hardware roadmap going forward into SCSI Express or NVMe as an attached interface for, for solid state, mm -hmm. but the vendor that you're working with is committed to PCIe and won't be supporting NVMe on your schedule. So what we're saying is that your hardware procurement schedule can work at its own pace um, because the software is going to be independent. Okay, so you've got flexibility then. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Yeah, uh, so that's, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the thing that's really quite interesting, if I can circle back sure. to that idea yeah. about using a, a less expensive SSD, let's think about really why we're doing this caching in the mm -hmm. first place, which is that uh, CPU and memory capabilities have gotten more powerful faster mm -hmm. than I.O. performance. So in this server, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this CPU toward its maximum utilization. Mm -hmm. So if I do that with a relatively inexpensive C, uh, SSD, and I bring the CPU utilization up to you know 80 percent, 90 percent, I'm done. Okay. Beyond that, increasing I/O performance or mm -hmm. using a more expensive or a larger SSD isn't going to really do any, isn't going to have any big benefit for the so application. Diminishing returns, kind of thing. Is that what you mean? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And so that's one of the key things of that I hope people can uh, take away from this discussion of caching. Yeah is why are we doing caching from the server perspective? The reason we're doing it is to bring the server system back into balance so that CPU utilization hmm. is at the, the rate that it should be. So basically so that IT is getting the value it paid for right. from the servers that it's implemented. Okay. Um, the environments we look at, we see a lot of uh, servers where CPU utilization is you know 10% or less. Yeah, okay. Um, so, so bringing a server-side cache in can bring that CPU utilization up but once you get it to a satisfactory level, you don't need to be spending more. Right. Assistance. No, that makes sense. Good stuff. Well, great, Rich. Thanks for joining us. This is Eric Slack, Senior Analyst for Storage Switzerland. Thanks for joining us.